Welcome Gary. Gary McAllister has joined us today. What you think of Alonso, that's what he is. Leeds played Real Madrid tomorrow night at Ellen Road. The Leeds fans would think they could beat him. He turned down Man United before he went to Germany. Even before that as well. Yeah. Oh. Everybody these days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's steady on now. Can Rangers win the league this season? Celtics to lose. They All played for Scotland there. at cricket. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, that wouldn't be hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. It's another episode of No TV Tackle <coughs> Football brought to you by William Hill. Hi, Sam. How are you? Good morning, Natalie. I'm very well, thank you. And uh, looking forward to today's podcast as always. I'm super excited to, for today's podcast. I get super excited when we have Scottish guests on because it gives me a chance to talk Scotland, which I don't get to do a lot, Sam. Well, join the club here. That's because my parents are Scottish, so it's <gasps> good to be introducing... Um, should we say a fellow Scot? Then? Yes, yeah. let's do it. Three, <laughs> let's say three Scots today, Sam. Uh, so anyway, uh, I, That's uh, trouble. That's trouble. <laughs> Welcome, Gary. Gary McAllister has joined us today. We're really looking forward to uh, our podcast and uh, talking over his career and what's happened. Of course, uh, we bumped into each other at Leeds last season when I took over that dramatic last four games, which we didn't quite crack it, but Gary came down and... Uh, enjoyed his company when he was with us. So, Gary, yeah. thanks very much for coming. Lovely to see you. Nice to see you, Sam. Nice to meet you, Natalie. Thank you so much. It's so lovely to have you here. So, we always like to start by sort of finding out yours and Sam's history. So, we know recently that you saw each other with Leeds. Yes. But what's... Can you remember the first time you met Sam, worked with Sam, played against him? It's, what was it? It's the first time, the first time I actually saw him live was I actually travelled into Nottingham with Lanarkshire schoolboys. I was like... Just, just before I was leaving school and Sam... It was at the city ground, and it was one of Trevor Francis's first games. So that was that was the pool. It was like Trevor Francis with the the big sign and Clough had made. But I just I just we were in the lower stands and very close to the players. And there was this colossus of a centre half kicking lumps out of this million pound player Trevor <laughs> Francis. And I'm thinking that that was so. From that day, I was like, I'll just keep an eye out for that. I might, have, I, shot. I might have had a bit of a mullet then, and all by the way, <laughs> you had a I, mullet. Might have been a bit longer than yeah. They're back in fashion then, Sam. Yeah, so, wow. <laughs> so, that, so that, that was my first memory of yeah. Sam Allardyce. And Leeds was the most recent one. Um, how, and, and obviously Leeds in the Championship this season, I think they're sitting fourth at the minute, I feel yes. like. Uh, but there's that kind of gap between the top four and everybody yes. else now. Yes. How have you rated their season? The, the, yeah, that, they're, I've been four or five times, seen them live and watched quite a bit of them on TV. They're, they're, they look more comfortable in this division. I thought when Sam arrived, it was a real tough job. Then players were struggling to cope with the levels of the Premier League. With four games to go, it was it was it was it was a task that it was going to be very difficult to try and keep Leeds in the Premier League. And I think, you know, the little bits when you invited me along, yeah. I didn't go there to do this big sort of rally and speech. Sam quite simply asked Eddie Gray and I just to walk in and we we're just trying to get the, the impression over that ex players, players that have won for Leeds United were just love generally concerned. Yeah. And and the love for the club. And I think I think we got over to the players the, the, the your thinking of the invite. Yeah. And, I, and obviously I knew Robbie Keane who Sam had took there. And so it was it was just really nice to go back to the training ground at Thorpe Arch and just to just just know the players for those final four games that, you know, ex players are generally, you know, they're thinking of the present day players, and they just want them to. We we just wanted Leeds to stay in the Premier League. Yeah. What was it like when Gary came came in? Did you did you invite Gary? Did well, yeah, you invite we invited. Else yeah. When you were at Leeds? Well, we had Eddie Gray, who's a stalwart, and then uh, Gordon Strachan. You know what I mean? So you know that all what Leeds means to them. You know what I mean? It's, I think that uh, that that I think we, I think the the effect was fine. But the, the the bottom line is <laughs> we just weren't good enough. You know, going to going to Ellen Road now. You know, they're winning most games. They're they're in a they're in a good place. I think the manager's done a fantastic job. He's very good at getting teams out of that division. And I, I it's it's you know looking at Leicester, it looks as if they're going to go and they're going to they're going to cruise it. But then after that, it's really tight. I think I think most of thought Ipswich are are just going to collapse. Collapse, but they've yeah. kept going really well. Yeah. Southampton are in a great run. So it's, if I was putting money on it, I would go for the three that went down and are going to go back up. Mm. Yeah. Leeds but, but I think Leeds most still in the cup, Leeds still in the FA Cup. Yeah, they drew at the weekend against Plymouth, so they've got a replay, which 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 they don't really need. 
Well, I think Ipswich going out of the cup, even though it's by Maidstone, even the that's managed, interesting. That's different. I, I would, I would, it would help them. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, it'd be, it'd be interesting watching Ipswich in the next two or three yeah. games. As much as you know, the people will, will, will say mm-hmm. it's a blessing that they don't have any cup, you know, they don't have another fixture playing in the cup. But losing to a team in the sixth yeah. tier of football, how's how's that going to affect confidence? And if the next result is poor, that's good. And that's then as a wee bit, then it then it might be panic station. So, I I understand that having less fixtures will help in the promotion push. But I think the I think effect them, on though, confidence they'll, is big. they'll have a much smaller squad than than yeah just there is coming that. up from the, the you know from the the first division, division. and their finances will yeah. be a lot a lot less than. The three at the top. Yeah, I mean Leeds will probably and they've still almost got the, par- the parachute treble, payments as well. Treble Ipswich's yeah. wage bill. Yeah, I would have thought. You know what I mean? So same with the same with Southampton and same with Leicester. Yeah. So but the, so that means Ipswich's squad will be much much tighter. Abs- yeah, I agree and with it, that. And, and I agree Abs- with what Gary's saying. The effect of losing against Maidstone, but all also you can easy pick up two or three injuries in the FA Cup. Especially when it goes to replay, and especially the fact that in the championship you're playing forty. But the schedule in that championship the 46 is brutal games, as well. It's, you, know oh, yeah. it's, you know, it's Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, and then you throw in it, you know, mm. replays and stuff, you know, and cup, you know, as you see injuries as well. But that they're so ex, their expectat- expectation levels are so high. If Leeds played Real Madrid tomorrow night at Ellen Road, the Leeds fans would think they could beat them. <laughs> I kind of like that. that no, kind of com- as soon as that, as soon as, as yeah. honestly, as soon as that diminishes, that's when a club starts to really go. Yeah. So it's it's good to have that bit of pressure. So we always like to find out as well, Gary, what our guests are up to currently. So, um, obviously, we know that you were coaching, assisting, managing, um, at a few clubs recently. Villa, the most recent. Villa was the most recent with Stephen. You know, we came down from Glasgow after winning the league up there, which was amazing. <clears throat> and then, obviously, Stephen applied for a few jobs in this country, and and just just missed out on a few. And, and obviously, he was very keen to get back into work. And, and Stephen was offered a job in Saudi and asked me to go along. But for for me, it just it just didn't sit at the right time. You know, I've, I've got two boys who are up and away, but I've also I've got two younger girls, so fourteen and twelve. So, so family wise, the move to to Saudi just it just didn't sit right with me. And I made this decision not to go. And it's it's been tough over there for him. It's, a, it's been a hard start for Stephen, but he's, I speak to him regularly. He's enjoying it. It's a massive project. He'll be given an opportunity. He's just signed a to new build. contract, has he? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a wee bit on arriving at Rangers where the training ground again was needed needed work. Ibrooks needed work, you know, recruitment, sports science, nutrition. It's, he's gone into Saudi and obviously that his knowledge of elite are are, are operating. And one of the best leagues in the world. He's going to he's, he's going to, he's going to try and build it. develop it and build yeah. it. So I think he's enjoying that, but it takes time as well. Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. So what's the day to day life like? So for now? me now, enjoying I'm enjoying yourself. Yes, I'm relaxing. I'm, I'm, I'm doing bits and bobs like this. <laughs> You'll I, still I, want to get back in. Like we all you do. never <laughs> somewhere along the line. You never line. say he never. hopes the phone rings and <laughs> come along with me or whatever. Uh, do you know what, Sam? Be. See, over the years, yeah. I've, I've signed deals with BT and Sky and saying, like, "That's it. I'm going to just go and concentrate yeah. on the TV." A year in, you get a phone call. Go, oh, sorry, I need to break this. I've got to uh, go. go on, Brendan then. Rogers asked me to go back to Liverpool once. I had a really good contract with, with BT at the time. No. And then back working with Sky and Bits and Bobs with the television stations. And then Stephen came. And it's like, <laughs> oh, go on. There's nothing quite like it's like There's nothing like that, no. Once you're on the grass and you're in, a, in that environment with the, with players and the, the crack and the bat, it's... It's it's what we have. I'm an, I'm more ex player than you know. Sam's managed over a thousand games, but my my experience in football is generally as as a player. And I'm more. I like to get in the line of more mentoring and just being an older player who can help younger players. Yeah. So might we, is, we? If the phone rings, if the right opportunity comes, or we could we see you going oh, back Sam, in? Sam needs help if he's, he's back. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Gary, Gary McAllister, Sammy Lee. 
<laughs> Robbie Keane. Robbie Keane. It'll yeah. be the greatest. Carl Robinson. Set up Carl Robinson. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you could do a lot. You could, you could do a lot worse, Sam. You could do a lot worse. Now you've led me lovely in there. You mentioned Carl Robinson there. There was a picture of you yesterday on social media that we saw. Yeah. And you are sat somewhere next to Ryan Giggs. Now I can tell by looking at the picture that that is the back of Carl's head it is. because he's a friend of the show and he's been on a few times. Yeah. And obviously people started going ooh. But I mean, what, what's this picture? <laughs> but I'm guessing you were going to see some friends. I was seeing uh, Carl and, and and I haven't seen Ryan for, Ryan for quite a while, but I just wanted to see how how it was uh, happening at Salford, like you mean. So I was uh, I was there for two reasons. One, see how Carl's going on, and two, I, I was very interested in um, seeing if. Uh, uh, what Salford's university is like, because we've actually um, developed an app for young players to, uh, it's electronic CV, if you like. So we're trying to trying to promote, it's called Roots, actually, like you mean. So it keeps an, it keeps an eye on your career from a youngster right the way through to being professional or beyond. So everybody, everybody's input from, uh, the coaches, from the player himself, from the manager, from from his studies, from his lecturers, from the physio, whatever. So they haven't got no confusion on on what happens to them, whether they stay in football or whether they get. And I suppose it's probably aimed mostly on the lads that qu- don't quite make it. Mm. Yeah, they have a well. They follow perf- the game. They have a perfect CV. They walk away with a perfect CV. And uh, obviously, this came about by the fact that when it was talked about, the lads in Wigan who develop it, they're actually rugby lads, Andy yeah. Clark and Phil Clark. They, they did the, the E Triple P, you know, that's in football. And so uh, we're trying to trying to get off the ground now because like every new business is very difficult. But uh, my grandson got a scholarship in America, but it took took his dad three three and a half months to accumulate what he needed to get the scholarship, which was exactly what this app would do. So how is that, Diversified a bit there, didn't I get? You know, how is that, Carl? Carl's happy. Our friend of the show. Really happy about being back in management. He's been chomping at the bit. And uh, obviously when uh, Paul and and Ryan rang him, he he went to meet him and uh, and, and he's obviously impressed on where they want to go. He loves his football. Yeah, Carl's a football. He wants to get out of this division. And internet. That, that's well, that's what we've been trying to do with, for like years. Yeah. 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 So uh, good luck. Good luck to him. Good. It's been a good start for them. Two two draws and two wins, I think, yeah. in his first four games. So yes, hopefully he'll come back on soon hopefully. and see us again. Um, so loads going on in football to talk about. And do you know what, Gary? Sometimes the stars just align and yeah. we have you booked way before the, yeah. a big announcement happens at one of your former yeah. clubs. And it's perfect that we've got him wow, to yes. talk about it, the big Sam. News. This is the big news, yes. The big news. Do you know what? Like, like myself on hearing the news the other day, I think like everybody in the world of football was, what? I think they probably rocked back onto their yeah. heels. Yeah. I was like, no, that's a wind up, you know, because it was a couple of texts first and then I see, and then, you, then then my phone explodes with, with messages and, and headlines. So as surprised as, as everybody, and obviously uh, Jürgen had let the owners know in November, so they've done amazingly well to keep it under this wraps. Long. Yeah. This long. <laughs> this and, long. And, and part of me thinks that the announcement was made because it may have been, it was Coming out, somebody out. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. so but, I, but again, still, still. Yes. But I thought it was very sincere and very heartfelt the way he spoke. You know, it, it, it just, and this is something that's affected Sam over the years as well. I can remember you putting heart monitors yeah, and yeah. tested, and and yeah. the, was speaking about the LMA in, and how much they're concerned about you know managers' health and mental welfare. He's, he's sort of basically said he's tired, and, and it's you know nine years at Liverpool with the expectation of, of what the fans and what you've got to do there to be a success. He's done an amazing job. He's he's, he's brought the club yeah, yeah. I so, think that, I think so that, together. Yeah, I think that um, his personality is, is where his strength is. That's, it, that's what makes that's, him different. You know, that's his man management, you know, and, uh, and I think that uh, the, the whole fans and the all of Liverpool fans bought in, have bought into him and that's why I think they've been the a perfect. Is so I think it's a perfect, perfect match yeah. as well, Sam. Yeah, because I mean, it's the style of play. It's it's front yes. foot. It's in your face. It's what, it's what Liverpool fans, yeah. you know, they demand. They want to see. They want to see 
players playing for the jersey, you know, and playing for the badge. And and he brings that. He's got massive character, massive personality, as Sam says. But he's but he's also knows how to recruit and bring people together. And it takes all sorts to make a good team. Not only has he built one fantastic team. There's you know, another he's, one he's, coming now, isn't it? This one now. This one's developing looking now. Looking at the season now, yeah. it's like, oh, anything could happen. Yeah. And that's that's like four or five it's, major big, you know, midfielders especially, where they were looking a little bit leggy and a little bit tired. Totally refreshed that part of the pitch. And, and Liverpool are heavily involved in four major competitions. As we and speak. Not, not the biggest suspenders either, Gary. No. It's all been, it's, which, is you know, a, which is which is a burden. I, yeah, in today's but it's also I think it's the experience of the owners. The owners are experienced yeah, sports club owners. That's right. Yes, and they, and they, 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 you know sell to buy, and you know it's they know how to run a they know how to run a sports business. But I think you get a little frustrated by that, yeah. like we all would when when you miss out on what might like Bellingham. Yes. Do you mean? But that's a that, 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 one signing you want or you need for Liverpool. Yeah, would have been a juice. I thought he'd been outstanding for Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? But that, that one player in the future might I, clinch him the if, title. If, you know what I mean? If 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 Jude Bellingham decided to come back to the UK, it'd be interesting to see where Liverpool were then. Mm. But because as a youngster, you know, it might have been a lifelong dream of, of Bellingham to, to pull on the weight of Real Madrid, you know. It you might know. be, yeah, sure. So that's sure. probably, you know, that might be the reason. It wasn't nothing to do with monies or salaries or, it's just the fact that when an opportunity to go to Real Madrid, Real Madrid and Liverpool, you, you speak of them in the same sentence. But he turned down Man United before he went to Germany. Even before that as well, yeah. So. Isn't everybody these days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's steady on now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Jurgen Klopp anyway, but Jurgen, um, I think he's going to be uh, whoever takes the job. Uh, Xavi Alonso has been heavily tipped for it, like I mean, not sure, not sure he's the answer. Uh, the Zerbi, you know, they've gone to get battered last night four 0 by Luton. So the, it's I know, I, do Sam, you know, I, do you know how your a, career can change though. Yeah, it's it's amazing, isn't it? Because if you're in the right place at the right I, time, you'll get yeah. the job. Like you mean, and deserve is mm. probably in the right place because his previous clubs, he's ended up getting sacked from. Yeah, he's, he's five or six he's, seconds, five, yeah. You know what I mean? So he's not like he's not coming with this huge reputation when he arrived here, but he's building a huge reputation by the way he's I th- playing. I think the at, obvious at one right in the bookie's favourite is obviously Zabi Alonso. Zabi Alonso. You know, he's, he's obviously yeah. you played with him. I didn't play with him. I have played with him in sort of old old guys games. Okay. <laughs> old guys. <laughs> <laughs> Legends games, Legends and, games. And, and and obviously when you when you when you as a player, he's a, he's a very classy player, and you meet him as a guy, he's a he's a classy, he's always immaculately, you know, turned out, and everything. What you think of Alonso, that's what he is. You know, he's very yeah. measured, preparation. He he went and did some work at Sociedad before he got the Leverkusen job, and come the end of the season, I know he's, he's very inexperienced, but if you can add a Bundesliga to your CV. By finishing Ooh, yes. above, by finishing Absolutely. above Bayern and Dortmund, Harry yeah, Kane, Bayern, he's in the right yeah. place at the, the right time. And the thing is, Sam, he's, I, me, I think it's a you know elite levels management now. You need youth on your side as well, it's because it's as much as experience and age helps. It's it's becoming it's becoming really. I think it's really high pressured, and he's got he's got age on his side as well. But allied to that, that, that means lack of experience. But winning in winning in Germany would be ahead of. Yeah. Munich and Dortmund yeah. would be massive. Please excuse me, I just want to stop this episode quickly because Big Sam and I just want to say a huge thank you to you for supporting No Tippy Tappy Football, whether you are listening or watching or doing both. Sam and I absolutely love doing this podcast and we couldn't do it without you. So take a second, please, and subscribe or follow wherever you are watching or listening to us. We're also on Twitter, No Tippy Tappy Football, and we have our own YouTube channel. I know everybody says it, but it really would mean a lot to us and it means that we can keep getting bigger and better guests the more followers and the more subscribers we have and then you can go and tell all your mates that you've done big sam a favor so thank you for listening we've had a lovely question in from one of our listeners we always ask every week if yes. our viewers would like our to great subscribers send, yes, yes our great subscribers to send great, us questions uh, uh, uh. 
and they do they send it uh, you can do a comment on a YouTube one of our YouTube videos or you can get us on Twitter or me on Twitter you can ask us a question so Luke Williamson asked should we read anything into the fact that Klopp's staff are also leaving with him I think that's a fashion I think that's a, that's something people stay at your team you, you know they've been through so much together highs and lows but mainly mainly highs at that group of, of staff and I think that's a that's a very that's a modern thing you know when the, not only when you when a manager moves, when he goes to the next club, the likelihood is he'll take four or five with him. And he lost one of his trusted right-hand men after a couple of years, didn't he? I can't remember. Yeah, I think there was a wee bit of a fallout there. He went back, he went back to Dortmund. I mean, but he, he, over, he overcame that and yeah. with not too much um, difficulty, didn't he? Pep, he Pep, took, yeah. Pep, Pep Linders moved up and they two yeah. have, they've, they've, been, they've been a very good team together. Pep's lost a couple of his staff now, and he's it's not bothered yeah. him, has it? Um, Leicester's manager, yeah, yeah, and, Leicester, yeah. and, and uh, Arteta, and Arteta, obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah. Carl, Carl. <laughs> he's yeah. at Burnley now. Who's a massive, massive? Yeah. I think it's a massive loss to Man City on what he brings to him. Yeah, mm. you know, I know he's on the head of the sewer and all that, but they are massive, pay a massive job in your backroom staff in terms of looking after players and. Yeah, so but Pep so so. carries quite a big team as well, doesn't he? He does. I mean, he does. He does, and he, then yeah. when he moves. He brings. He brings the the entire team as well. Do you think um, Stephen Gerrard's name should be in the hat? Do you think <coughs> it should be being considered? Um, um, I think it's obviously a, a dream of Stephen's, obviously to get involved with if he get involved back at Liverpool. But he's got he's he's in a he's in a big project over in Saudi at the moment, and 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 I can understand why he's, he's not been mentioned because he's, he's he's took a journey there. But there's nobody loves Liverpool more than than Steven Gerrard. If he was still at Villa and and, and he was where they are now, yeah, it's he, like we had. He would be. We had. A, it, it was. It, it was a be. wee bit unfortunate, and it, and it, any time I talk about Villa, it sounds as if you are making excuses, and and make, and and it's. I don't want it to sound like that, but. Luck does, and Sam will tell you, luck does play a part. We made three big signings on our, on, on arrival or at, at, at the second season. You know, Diego Carlos from Sevilla, uh, Bubakar Kamara from Marseille, and Luca Dina from Everton. And obviously, when you're picking, they, they were three starters. They were going to be three players that are going to start. And so, enable them to come in, three are going to go the other way, or, or, or you're going to. You're going to sort of sit down and have, have the conversation that there might be less minutes. We, we don't necessarily want you to go, but the circumstances are we've got three players coming in and you guys are going to be, you, you might not get the minutes you want. And then the, the three players that we bring in get injured within 10 days of each other. You know, and, and, and all all three injuries were above three, four months. So it was like, gosh. So it was, it was, it just didn't fall right. And we lost, we lost two or three games in the bounce and, and then you, you you're no you're no given time you know it's it's and but, but but it's not an excuse and it's that you don't want to hide behind that but you need a wee bit of luck. Talk to me about John McGinn while we're on Villa. Yes. Um. Obviously, I want to get on to Scotland once we've done Liverpool. Uh. But John McGinn, crikey, I, I love him. Obviously, that was one of the it was a big decision Stephen made. Obviously, Tyrone Mings was the captain. On arrival, you know, we're obviously going in there and 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 it's a, it's a a, a fresh slate, so to speak, and we're looking and we're looking at the characters. We're looking. We're just talking about personalities and the people who who command respect around the changing room and canteens and around the building. We, the people who wash the kit, and McGinn was the outstanding. He was the voice. He was he, he funny he, he personality, but also very consistent performer. You know, very robust. And so when you, you need a captain who plays most games. So we made the decision. Or Stephen made the decision of of making John. John the captain. It did affect his performance, you know, for a for a period, but now I think he's still got that armband and Umay Emery has put the trust in him and, and he is a captain, you know, and he's 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 as much as you know the captain of Scotland when he plays for the national team, he plays like a captain. He's a leader. He, he can score a goal, he can make a goal. On the eye, not as you know, not as elegant as Glenn Hoddle, but very effective. He's and a great guy. You know, a proper a proper player. Robust, sir. I like that. He's more than that. He's more, he's more than that. He's robust by the fact that he he is he's, he's the whole of his game. But his talent is. No, I mean, uh, some of the robust the I mean, man to talent with the, yeah. the fact that he is yeah. strong. He can run all day. He can put his foot in. But his his ability to 
to assist and score. Yeah. I think he's very, very I good. I think when I say robust, I mean he doesn't get injured. Yes. You know, yeah. Or when he's injured, yeah. he plays through injury. He'll yeah. play through, you know, a bit of pain. I mean, he's robust in the fact that he's, he trains most days. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that's a big thing when you oh. go to, when you go to a, a, a recruit. Yeah, definitely. I think I think it's a, that's definitely a positive. I mean, does he play I games? Love and a does he train? Player. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, toughened. But yes, you I have to pay it. particular attention to that when uh, when you're talking about about when you're signing a player for the millions that you're spending now. Like mm-hmm. I mean, you look at his past record, and if he's not playing, it's very difficult to commit if they're not playing thirty five games a yeah. year. Anything anything under thirty, yeah. then it's you, you look at his record and you got to say. You got to say to your scouts and your owners, and oh, it's a good play. Yeah, but you do realise he's only half a season, man. Yep. And John's not a young man, he's so he's he's, he's, he's sort of he's set that level of of, of producing and playing games. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love him. And I, I love him. To be fair, it reminds me of Gary Speed. Do you know that? Yes. Yeah, little bits there. Just, yeah. You yeah. know, never gets injured, up and down, speed, in there all the time. Is. Level of performance. Sam, if I, I honestly, box box. over the years of playing alongside Gary, if you'd seen some of the states of his ankles, you know, prior, you know, getting into a game on a Friday and you're looking mm-hmm. at a bit like that, strap it up, take a jab. It was, he was just wanted to go on the pitch, just played. I, you know, it's, I'm not saying that that's a, that doesn't happen today. It does. You know, people, people, are, people just want to go on the pitch. You know, after you train all week, you want to play. But I've, I've, seen, I've seen his, his ankles have been black and blue. And, just strap it up. Might hurt for two or three days after. <laughs> oh, you've led me on again. To uh, if we're in injuries now, um, uh, talk to me about Mohamed Salah. So both of you, um, obviously Jurgen leaving. The problem about the fact that he got injured over in the African. Nation. No, no, I was thinking no. more about his future. So. Jürgen leaving come the end of the season. Obviously, I'm sure Saudi Arabia will yeah. be offering him lots and lots of money. Do you think that Salah will stay with Liverpool? I think he'll. I think he'll definitely stay. I've got to say, I, I, I just cannot see. see. How it goes. No, I just, no, I just think he'll stay. I just think he's got far too much in his locker to be thinking about going and playing <clears throat> in that in the league, which is obviously not at the level where they wanted Saudis wanted to be. But you know, Liverpool. You know, as we speak right now, they're you know, we don't know what, what they're going to end up with at the end of the season. Why would you want to leave if you actually win a, a double? Or if you even if you win one trophy. Winning trophies is hard. But the other thing is, I just think his levels, he still wants to be playing at elite level. I don't think he needs to drop. He, he can go there in maybe Later two on, or yeah. three years' time. Mm. But I think, I think Mo Salah, especially his form this year, and again, really surprised to see him come off a pitch. Very rarely mm. picks up injuries. He obviously trains. He normally trains. comes off shaking his head when yeah, he, he drops something. Yeah, you don't want it. Doesn't, to doesn't want to come off. Like going, what are you doing again? Taking me so off. So again, like, it's yeah. you know they're in Europa League. You would have to say Liverpool are favourites to win the Europa League, and that gets Champions League qualification. They're, they're they're top of the league as we speak. So it's the Champions League is looking good for next year for Liverpool, and that's what that's what Salah wants to be. I don't think he. He can do the other bits later on. There's questions about his future, and also I've seen people question about Van Dyke's future as well. Do you think he stays beyond Jurgen? Well, he's come out and said it's just a load of nonsense, and I think that you get all of that, like you mean. Um, but but there, there, there is one question mark where when Jurgen kept it quiet or how quiet it was kept. I don't know where it was shared, but only at the top, I would have thought, in the beginning. The club had an opportunity to ride in and sort of contracts there and then. Mm. If somebody wants to leave now because Jurgen's leaving, that could be a possibility. My feeling I'm not saying it's it. I'm not saying it's going to be him. That could be anybody yeah. that's yeah. in in a in a contract that's that's going to run out in, in the next or next season and say, mm. well, I'll ride it out now and get free, see where I go. Uh, but obviously will they get any better than playing for Liverpool? And captain in Liverpool. Yeah, you know, and and and, yeah. and and Liverpool, you know, when he we had that bad knee injury, he came back and he was he, he, so good, wasn't it? The beginning took a while mm. to get back into his rhythm, but now you're seeing you're seeing that Rolls Royce. And at Liverpool the back made now. him a much better player. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, he, I was at West Ham and played against him when he was when he was at um, Southampton, and there was always a bit of a, there's always a bit of a risk. Sam. There was a big you reluctance because I yeah. you know I see I watched Celtic quite a lot the season yeah. he was up at Celtic, yeah. you know, doing the TV. 
and he was oh, he was way above the levels there. But the, but but the thing up at Celtic, he was outstanding in the European games. You know, and I was I was really surprised that, you know, Liverpool then or Arsenal or Manchester United or even they, 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 everybody looked at him, and it was only South it was Southampton. Yeah. So so making that move Celtic to Southampton then gave him the opportunity to get the big the big move. But mm. the teams just wanted to see him play in the Premier League. Mm. So at Liverpool, there's um apparently there's a rumor, or the fan the fans have said there's been a rumor, Gary, that Jurgen calls Alexis McAllister <laughs> Gary. Have you heard this? I have heard it. I must be quite. Have funny. you heard Jurgen say it? <laughs> well, I've not have heard you Jur- just heard the rumor? I've heard, the, I've, heard, I've heard the rumor. I did. I did. I, when I was working at Villa, and we played down at when 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 Alexis was at uh, Brighton. I sort of we, we just passed and he stopped and, and he looked at me and I went. Where's where is the connection? It's like I don't think he comes. There's there is a lot of heritage in in Argentina. There's a lot of Scots who went there. Is is obviously I think mining was the big thing way back in yeah, yeah, hundreds yeah. and hundreds of years ago, yeah. and they took the expertise of Scottish miners. And so there, I think there is something a way back in there. We could get well, Mark Allister and saying that, <laughs> yeah. saying that he's won a World yeah. Cup medal. I might know. I might know what it'd be. But Scottish. is that is, that, is, is his. The back end of his family is the Scottish connection with that name. No idea. Do you know but what? I've not done... I furiously Googled it when I noticed him playing in the Premier League to see if he was so Scottish there's, there's, or not. <laughs> has his MAC, it means his M small C A double L, and M C A one L is Scottish. My McAllister, I think, is is Irish. But McAllister MAC, I don't know where that originates from. Right. Great compliment, though. Oh, yes. Great compliment. World Cup winner. Yes, a World Cup winner who I wish was Scottish and was playing um, at the Euros. At the Euros, at, which at brings me to the lovely Euros. Um, I'm very excited, very excited for the Euros. Going into it, feeling really optimistic, which I don't think I've ever done. You know, Steve, Steve Clark. You know, when when you see Steve on the TV, he's, he just never yeah. changes. You know, so whenever he's, he's qualified for this is his second Euros now. It is, yeah. And it's you know we were a long time missing. I've got to say, you know, I was unbelievably fortunate to play in two Euros, Euro 92 and Euro 96. And I've got to say, Scotland add to a major championship. Yes. Just purely because, you know, I'm not, that's fans. not being biased. When the fans turn up, I can remember Euro 92 when it was only eight teams. It was two groups of four. And we were, it was in Sweden. And I can remember Andy Roxburgh thought, right, we'll, we'll, we'll go and see the fans. We, we drove into this campsite because Sweden's <laughs> pretty expensive. So it was like a tented village. And it was, it was early in the morning and you could, all these Scots guys coming out with kilts and it was like they were bladdered from the night before. <laughs> and you could see them looking as, that's the team, that's the national team boss. And, and they couldn't believe they'd seen McCoyst and Golf and Gorham. Yeah. It, was, oh. it was to see the faces on these, all these big, big bearded Scots guys <laughs> with, with, with kilts on, it was it was outstanding, but Scotland when they when, when Scotland in a, in a major championship, I, I think they do add. But this this one in particular, it's when I look at the group, as much as we're we're in the same group as the hosts, and we play them in the opening game, but Hungary and Switzerland, I think we can, I think we can beat them because we've never we've never qualified at the group stages. I it saw would be the brilliant group, for Steve yeah. Clark if we could do that. Never, I saw ever. the group. Never ever. Yeah, oh, we've, ne- we've, got, we've been in a lot of majors. Even with the great, like, it's helped really strapping. Well, you, you think of all of those. You know, you top think players, of 7 yeah. 8 with Sunus, McQueen, Pugleesh, yeah, Jordan, McQueen, yeah. Asa Hartford, Aye, Archie yeah. Gemmell, and yeah. then Archie Gemmell. Side that one, it. Strachan, Sunus, Nicholas. And, 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 to be fair, the, the, the one that. Well, obviously, the one that kills me. Mm-hmm. I missed the penalty in, in, at Wembley against England, but we were we were beating Switzerland at Villa Park, and England were four 0 up against Holland, which meant we were through. And then Dave Seaman get beat at the near post by Clive in the last minute to make it four one, and we and we didn't qualify through goal difference. Oh, wounded, <laughs> absolutely wounded. When the draw was made I had to sort of like take a moment because I was I, I thought I fancy us in this group but I also don't really know why because they're other they're, they're you know the great the the you know Germany are a great team they're good teams like but Germany are going through that I think I think if Germany were picking a, a team to open up to play against I think Scotland would be the one they wouldn't want to play because yeah. we're, we're good underdogs and the pressure will be on Germany yeah. 
the, the, the national teams, they've struggled. For not quite as good as they were, are no, they? They're not, no, they're not performing at all. So maybe an upset in the, the opening game of the oh. tournament would be, it'd be typical of Scotland. Yes, it really But then is. not to blow it after it. And then we blow it. <laughs> they get all our ropes off, Gary. And, and then get we... beat by Switzerland and yes. Hungary. Yes, I'm desperate. I'm really hoping to be there. I'm really hoping to take my dad. My dad doesn't fly, so I really want to take him on the train just to experience No, I'm the, the same. I, I, I fancy getting a bit of the tournament. I really, I'd be, I'm going to go and see everybody, everybody's going to pr- Everybody's going to prey on the the fatigue and injury scenario for the squad. Yeah. Like I mean, because Scotland won't have the greatest selection of... Well, it's a bit, it's a bit, I mean, England haven't got the greatest yeah. selection of English players anymore. So I would say is, when, I, when I look at... When I, we when need I look them all fit. When I look at our squad, yeah. it's like when you're a midfielder, your eye is drawn to the middle of the park, mm. you're a defender, you look at the, you look at back yeah. lines and stuff. But I look at our team and I think our strength is the middle of the park. And I think yeah. when you go to a major tournament, because of the, its end of season and fatigue kick, can kick in, You've got to have the ability to try and keep the ball in periods of the game, especially if it's hot. In Germany, it can yeah. be hot. Yeah. So when I look, we've got McGregor at Celtic, we've got McGinn, we've got Billy Gilmore, we've got McTominay, we've got Kenny McLean. We've got five or six. You know, you don't put them in the world clap, but they're very competent international That's players right, yeah. and they're good footballers. And Steve Clark has sort of garnished this sort of domestic team sort of ambience when the, when the national team comes together. There was a big period when nobody turned up. You know, players didn't want to play for their country. All of a sudden, oh, everybody's turning yeah. up. Oh. Everybody wants to be there. And, 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 and That's a credit now, to Steve, that then, isn't it? And he's created something. It's, that. it's very, it just, look, I, I don't know, I've not been to any of the camps or anything, but from the outside looking in, it's very much what Craig, the, the team that I played in, in that generation, because we did in 1992, 96, 98, a wee bit like Craig Brown, you know, getting people together. Yeah. We, we're a bit more like a club side rather than being isolated individuals coming in from other clubs. My dad, when I was growing up, one of my strongest memories, he had a T-shirt that said five in a row yeah. that he used to wear. And he was so proud that we qualified for five in a row. And then obviously we went. Then went a long time. years or something, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, another big story that's been in the news this week, we always like to tackle them, Sam. Um, and do you know what? I feel like we've talked about Marcus Rashford a lot on, on our pod oh. this season. And then oh. this weird thing happened at the weekend. So he was ill, but then he's there's pictures of him having, it's fair to call it, a bender in, in Belfast. What do you make of the stories and what he's done and how he's how Ten Hag has handled it? It's just weird to me, Sam. <laughs> well, well is it fake news? Is it, is it, is it genuinely, no, it's, it's genuinely yeah, been the two nights? Done before, yeah, but he's done before. I read an article on this, history, uh, the, this, this morning and about the fact that he'd gone down to China White Stand in London. Yeah. That was his, that was the one previously to this where he's ended up missing training or something like that. Like I mean, so there's previous uh, that's sneak sneaking into his 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 life again. Sam, you and I can we can safely say you know we're we're no angels here. You know, no. but there is a time and a place. You know, there, there's a time and a place to let your hair done and 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 have a few drinks or or, or be with your mates. But it's when you're elite, elite. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter if you play in the third or fourth division. There's still a time and a place. Timing. And it's just bad timing. Bad timing because he's, he's not played particularly well this season. And just just when you look at the date, you know, the, the hours before the next game, you, you can't do it. It's just, it's it's unacceptable. You can't do it. Absolutely, yeah. There's no, there's no, it's, I mean. It's hard to. The, 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 there were one or two players in our time that were that so talented. They could. Because we didn't have the sports science we have today, they didn't have the monitoring we have today. We didn't have the stats we have today. We didn't have the diet, nutrition, didn't have the fluids, didn't have. The, but it still didn't the make strength. it right then. They Sam, didn't make know? it right then. No, yeah. but like you but know, it was the more, people, not accepted. But, the, but it, was, it like, happened more. The, you know, we saw later yeah, on yeah, Bessie yes, and yes. Tony Adams, and, and we could learn from. Who, you know, who, who, you know, would actually admitted that they played drunk and that, like you mean, which was you know, drinking culture was big in that time. But now, and and of, of course. Everybody, you know, looking at the situation and looking at Ten Hag, it, it's the last thing he needs. Yeah. And it's a, it's, a, it's not the first time. And, of course, worse for Marcus Rashford uh, in, in his own um, his own life needs to look at himself in the mirror and sort himself out. Nobody else can sort himself out, only him. He's got to be well, the, the man. The thing is, I've, I've focused and fit 
Rashford is top, isn't he? He's, he's, well, he's well, top. And whether he, whether he plays him. whether he plays as a nine or whether he goes yeah. to the side and plays either side of a nine, but when he's when he's at it, there's there's no better sight. You know, he's, he looks a, he's a proper real threat. He can score goals. He's proved that he can score goals. And and we're you're going into a, a summer where there's a major championship. Mm. You know, you're looking at Anthony Gordon's and players that are they're going to jump they're going to jump him and it's he'll he'll lose that slot. People are say a question in Ten Hag because obviously he clamped down really well on Ronaldo and then he he took really Sancho. stern action with yeah. Sancho. Do you think he needs to be sterner now with Rashford? Well, oh, I mean, you know, listen, he's a, that's old school management, you know. But he my, set, he set a president. The eye, well, Sam, president. I mean, what he, he set a president. What, he did, what yeah. he did with Ronaldo was was was. One of his biggest challenges at Man United, and and on the effect on the effect of all the other players, seemed to work mm. on the basis that. But still, Manchester United's problem is recruitment, on the fact that the players they've recruited aren't aren't showing the level of ability they thought they might. He thought they might to play for Manchester United and get them back to the top. But then I got this problem because I've seen it before. Get the new contract when you're in the last year of your contract. Play your very, very best, and then get the big con, the big, big contract, and then switch off. And that's what it yeah, looks like he's done. Not only is this discipline side, his performances are way down. Yeah, no, I agree. Compared to, he, I mean, he, he, there's no he, argument against that. That's the fact. That's fact, can. isn't it? Yeah. It's fact. It's like it's just not. And it's just, it is frustrating because he's a. It's, it's 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 his club. He's been brought up since I don't know how long he's been there. His mm. his whole life. I mean, he's had all this publicity about great stuff for yeah. child, children's off, off, food, off field, yeah. COVID, and, and you know, going down to to, to see the the Queen or the King or whatever it is at the time, and then all that is being brushed aside. All that good work and charitable work he's done, he's now looking at uh, everybody. will be looking at him like, especially United fans, going, you know, you're letting yourself down, you're letting the club down, yeah. you're letting your family down. Yeah. So he, he, he you know. Even though his reputation playing wise suffered a bit and people started saying he's spending too much time on this yeah. subject of yeah. child school meals being free and stuff like that, it's distracted from certainly last year. And was that because it was the last year of his contract? Yeah. Because we've seen other players. When he's been interviewed as a, as when he's been interviewed like that, as a you know. youngster, he always he's always looked as if he's been pretty humble and you know and all that yes, wonderful true, work yeah. that he's done away from football. You think, oh, it's a proper solid, you know, person here. But so you just hope behind I, I just hope that he's apologized to, to his teammates and apologized to this to all the coaching staff. Yeah. Because he's got to put his hand up and go, I've made a bad error here. In either of your coaching and your management times, did you ever have a player turn up late and then? Oh, you, that's loads of them. But then that's did you late. did you find out after that it's because he'd been out? Loads of them, loads of them. What did you do? Can uh, you tell us any well, stories? Well, it depends who it is and what it is, because I I'm I'm the opposite to what people might think. Like it, I won't cut my nose off to spite my yes. face. So I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one story about Juffy, and um, the likable <laughs> rogue. And, it um, would be Juffy and. Uh, he went out on. He went out and started on a Friday night, I think it was. And anyway, we found out that just before a game, and that staff staff are, are saying like, you know, Jufy's been out. Jufy, what do you do? And I spoke to Jufy, and he swore he hadn't been out. And they said, well, there's only one people drinks Louis Ronda Cristal, and that's you in Morton. There's only you can afford it, like I mean. <laughs> yeah, so he was that. He was that generous. He used to have all these hangers on yeah. that would be with him, and he'd buy them all drinks and so on. But anyway, so I said, I, I said I'll play you anyway. So obviously, I played him against the staff, saying you can't do that like me. And so I said, look, you're going to be in big trouble if you don't turn up today. Anyway, played really well, won the game. You, uh, let's, so without, without throwing anybody on, find the him bus. after. <laughs> what yeah. I mean. Well, Sam, see, generally the guys, the guys over the, you know, that's, I'm going back a bit there, and I'm very reluctant to name names, but generally the guys that did it produced. If if, if it was the following day was a training, or maybe a couple of days away from a from a big game or a, a, any game, when they've done the misdemeanour, they would be leading the training the following day. 
and mark your my words, at the weekend they'd be properly at it because all their teammates would be thinking, you need to produce here. Because you've let there's us a, down a little bit. There's a, there's a drink and then there's too many drinks. Yes. Yeah. So so we go down the line. The but Brits, it's smart, the Brits go down the line, you yeah. can't. Yeah. Right, so I've got Campo, Yero, right? In the hotel at Bolton after training on a Friday, both having a couple of beers. Yeah. They think nothing of having a glass of wine on a Friday. A glass of wine. Yeah. You're, you're at, you know, you'd be sitting, okay, sat yeah, in oh, Manchester yeah. having, a, having a glass of wine and with Fabian Bartes, like you mean. And, and it, 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 for them, and they're going, what, what you can't do it here? Somebody spots you, takes a picture it, of it. It's like, you, you know, yeah. it's kind of Was it Brownie happen. that talked? Was it Phil Brown that told us that he busted? We had somebody that said they found out that one of their players used to order beers to the, yeah, the room to the, room the yeah. night before an away right, game, yeah. yes. You know, <laughs> so, so, you know, it, 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 will, it will always happen. But if it's going to happen, make sure you don't get caught in public or don't, don't let the manager know. <laughs> I think, God, God, God bless him, Andy, Andy Gorham was an amazing character. Andy Gorham. A brilliant goalkeeper. What a he goalie, was, yeah. He was, what a goalie. For, for his body as well, he was unbelievable, and I think we we were we I don't know if you can remember, but Estonia didn't turn up for a game in Estonia, oh, and, right. and we turned up, kicked the game off. But then the game had to be replayed. Oh, yeah. The game had to be replayed in a, a neutral ground. It was played in Monaco, and the night before the game, there's a room service order goes up. It's a double cheeseburger <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a bottle of red. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously John Collins played for Monaco, so he knew it was the hotel that Monaco used. So he knew all the staff and they were like, John, John, last night, cheeseburger and cheeseburger and red wine. <laughs> and he went, you don't have to tell me who it is. That was his normal Friday night, oh, <laughs> night before the game. A double, of red. a double cheeseburger. He came out of retirement, played for me at Notch County. You oh, know he, was, he, was, he was a freak of nature. Unbelievable. Yeah. What a goalkeeper. I hadn't got a goalie and he just... Scampering around like it's Notch County, and uh, yeah, I'll come and play for yourself. How old was he? Well, he was in his thirties then. Well, in his thirties, I think he was late thirties. And, and he, he hadn't played for a while, like you mean. But he put his gloves on and played for me, and that was fantastic to actually put himself through that. We were in the the old, you know, thirties. You, you, you know the UNICEF. Like you know the age. UNICEF. Sam, the UNICEF game when uh, soccer aid. Soccer aid. Yeah, I think the rest of the world were looking for a. A practice match prior to playing England or with one of the celebrities or whatever. So I got a phone call saying, Could Scotland come down to London and play Craven Cottage against the rest of the world? Need a warm up. So I gets on the phone and I gets everybody down. says, We need to be staying here. We need to be booked in here. And then we'll come down. So we get there and it's Hulet, Zola, Mat- Mat- <laughs> Matthias, everybody's playing for the rest of the world. And they batter us. But we win 3 0. Gorham must have made yeah. 25 world class <laughs> saves. And obviously, he wasn't well, that well known. He played, played at Rangers. So it was like a, a, a league where he, he didn't have the profile of some of the other guys. I remember Zola and, and Hulick coming back. Who's that? And he does, you know, those big leg braces, <laughs> the, the, those big strappings. He had two of them on. He was making, <laughs> Zola was bending them in the top corner and, and he was making these saves. He was. He was he was an amazing goalkeeper, oh. best ever. He's in I, I used to see him in yes. Benny's in Radcliffe. This was the, the nightclub of all nightclubs in the northwest, by the way. <laughs> so if you want to know to see anybody, go to Benny's on a Saturday. Yeah, in Radcliffe, yeah. yeah Radcliffe? You drove down this lane, fat. The suburb of Manchester. God, honestly, it was, oh, it was absolutely full <laughs> every Saturday night, like it's all. God Amazing. knows what in the morning, like. But right, we're Andy, all off to Radcliffe. You'd see, you'd see Andy there, like he's playing for Oldham then, wasn't he? Yeah, when he first started, like you I mean, it's, but you that's see, the, the I mean, the lads. The other thing was he lads, played Man City, Man United, end the season party, we getting played, he played for Scotland at cricket. Huh? Really? Yeah. Well, that wouldn't be hard, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> 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 can you throw a ball? Yes, you're yeah. in. Um, right, we always finish with our not so quick fire questions, Gary. So another listener question: Elliot on YouTube has asked your thoughts on Michael Beale after working with him at Rangers. Um, he is feeling a bit of pressure already at Sunderland. Well, he's, he's he's comfortably in the playoffs slots, and that's what Michael Beale will be telling the, the Sunderland fans. I think he, he did. Why oh, he against him? What's he, what's, what's well, I, t- I think when Tony Mowbray getting getting fired, I think oh, the fans like that, they didn't, didn't like that, and he's, so he's arrived under a little bit of pressure. Um, 
as as far as coaching, Michael's up there. He's he's one of the one of the very best that I've worked with. You know, we we, we worked together. Rangers went to Villa, and he chose to leave Stephen and and go. So that it, we, we sort of went apart a little bit, and things have we've not really come back together. So it's just just the manner of the way that the split happened. Um, but coaching wise, I'd, I'd I'd have to reassure the Sunderland fans that he's he's on the grass. He's as good as anybody I've I've seen. Michael Beale, you know yeah. him, followed him, worked. No, I don't know him that well. He's a young no, modern coach, Sam, and other modern. You know what I mean? So it's techniques. like it's like everything else. Like you mean at the end of the day, the, the way you win them, that win the fans over, and the players over is is getting results. Just on winning games, keep it going. But if you're if you're if you're taking over a side that's already winning, yeah, it's a, there was not a it's lot. Another, it's another difficult task because mm-hmm. you've got everybody talking about why. Mm. Right, I mean, a bit like Wayne taking over Birmingham. They were going, was he top six? Yeah, yeah. And then no, he, and yeah. He, he, everybody goes. But Tony was Tony Mowbray was a favourite, wasn't it? I think was, I think yeah. that because yeah. Tony Tony's teams play with a bit of style and a bit of flair, and I, I think Sunderland was a, was a young team and he was giving youngsters opportunity, and the, and even. I've heard loads of Sunderland fans coming on radios and on TV and saying, even when they get beat, they were, you know, they were the way the, the youngsters were encouraged to try and play was was enough. But Sunderland need to get up. It's a big club that wants to ambition as well. Right, next quick fire question: Will Steven Gerrard work in the Premier League again? Well, for me, I hope so. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's, 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 it's a generation. It's players. hard to get. I, I, I'd say, I would say, it's made his chances more difficult going to Saudi. Hmm. I Possibly. would say, I'd say, taking the Championship club and doing. Well, maybe the route back well home, Sam, would be take it. You know, get the opportunity to maybe work in Spain or France or Italy. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. To make, make to make a pit stop. But if he wins, if he wins. In Saudi, then there's obviously that the, the, you're, you're a winner. I mean, he's a winner. All ends up at. Rangers, no, he's took, all, he's he took, took over on, a team. Took on Chelsea, yeah. uh, Celtic, didn't he? And you know, who were the big, who were the, the local rivals were also doing very well at that particular. Well, I think time. if Stephen Stephen needs to break, I think there's a top four in Saudi, and I think the team that Stephen Atifat El Atifat are, are they were a team that finished sort of six, seven, and eighth. So he's, he's he's got to beat that, yeah. and then he's actually got to try and break this a wee bit like here, the top four or the big six. I think that's that's I think that was the job brief that he's got to try and break into that over in over in Saudi. So you but I, I I would I would love to see him back. Here. Yeah, I'm sure he'd love to be back, and uh, and and be in. Well, there's not a lot wrong with being in the championship and getting them up. There's no. one thing more, nothing. There's not a greater feeling than actually achieving promotion out of the championship into the Premier League. And yeah. I, I don't, I, it's, and I, and I mean, I'm a little bit biased here, but but don't underestimate what he did at Rangers because Rangers are no, one of the most not. difficult clubs on the yeah. planet to, to manage because yeah. of the, the, the situation there with, with Celtic. And, he was taking and on people's... Brendan at the time, wasn't he? Yeah. Who was Mr. No Lose, wasn't he? Well, they were, they were, on, they, they were on seven in a row. So the, the job, <coughs> obviously, the. the both teams have done nine in a row, and and stopping ten in a row was big, and he managed it. It would be for the fans, definitely. Can Rangers win the league this season? Five points behind. Yeah, do hands? you know what? Watching it quite closely, yeah, it's 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 getting interesting at the top of the top of the table. It's 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 Celtic's to lose, but I think Philippe Clement's went in and done a fantastic job. I played with Philippe. At, I actually played alongside him at Coventry. He came. Coventry. Oh right, did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He got injured very early on arrival and didn't play many games, but. You know, quite a calm guy, and and just watching him, you know, actually deal with the Scottish press, and and he's he's, he's he looks very much in control, and the team's playing good football, and he's in a great run. So it's it's game on, it's game on at the top. I think there's a, is it March the next old firm? Is it? These are quick again, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they just. I think they just. I know. Obviously, I'm going to say yes, they can. Yes, of course you are. Okay, <laughs> which two teams will get promoted automatically from the Championship? Leicester, definitely. Leicester, I think everyone's yes. I think Leicester. Well, I'd, like to, I'd actually like to see Ipswich do it, yeah. but I think it's going to be Southampton. I think I think Leeds. I think Leeds and Leicester. Can, I think Leeds can catch Southampton and jump up and get. Mm. I think Leeds can get second. But I'm saying that. 
purely because I'm a wee bit fearful Leeds getting into a playoff final. Okay. So I'd, I'd like that to see... might be heart talking just, then. Yeah, I just want Leeds to get up automatically. Okay. And I'll let Southampton win the playoff. <laughs> so the three, <laughs> yeah. that, the three that went down are the three that go up. Yeah. Will your former club Coventry get into the playoffs, do you think? Matt Robbins has done... He's done... Oh, really he's remarkable. Yeah. He, he, he quietly just gets on with his job. Mm. No big headlines, just just wins games. No budget. Lose the, they lose their best player generally after each season. Look where they've come from as well in the last four, you know, four seasons. No stadiums, yeah. playing at other people's yeah. stadiums, begging. What a job he's done. And my last question for you today, how far or what is your prediction for Scotland in the Euros? Like every Scotsman, if we can go there and, and, and cause an upset in the, the first game, it would be brilliant. But to get out of the group, it would be such an achievement. No other manager or, or national team's done it. To get out of the group and get, get, get beyond that would be outstanding. Got to do a Wales like Chris Coleman did. Yes. <clears throat> That'd be great. Yeah. Oh. There'd be a few jocks going over if they qualified. Well, yeah. I'll just go if you've ever got tickets just for oh, the party and just, yeah. The whole of Scotland will be in Germany. Just watch it. Oh, gosh. Stop yeah. your beer up in the pub. <laughs> oh, 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 good old tingly. Thank you so much for coming on and being with us today. It's oh, been a it's been real fun. pleasure. Good Thanks, Gary. Great to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, as Thank always. You. Thank you all and for watching. Forget. I'm sorry for interrupting. No, no, that. you you remember. I have to say because I really need our subscribers to keep keep uh, joining us for uh, for our podcast and keep showing that uh, we've been okay and uh, we're really really enjoying it. And I hope you are. And thanks very much for because we want to go to the Euros, don't yeah, we, Sam? We, do. we want to take we the do. podcast to the Euros. There. I don't think we're allowed to say that, but that's what we want to do. So we need you all to subscribe so Sam and I can go and I can get in the Scottish party. Let's and I go. can get a ticket. <laughs> and yes, and Gary can come along as well. You can get us a ticket. Gary can come. So please subscribe. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.